Look at my poor bookcases. It's all fallen. This is what happens. Oh, can I go back far enough? This is what happens when you pack them too full. They come off at the sides. That one and that one. Oh well. Won't stop me buying books though. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, let's do this video again. Now, I wanted to do a, a little book review video for a change and I seem to be on a roll this week with my videos, so make the most of it, people. So, these two are both by Rachel Numier. I've read her Griffin Mage trilogy and I really enjoyed this. So, these were two standalones that she's done. So, this one is House of Shadows and this one is The Keeper of the Mist. They're both standalone. Um, I think this one might have potential for a sequel, though, and it is the newer of so I think it was out last year or maybe the year before. I'm not quite certain how long I've had it. Uh, this one is older, although I only bought this not so long ago. I think I might have put it... Oh no, I was interested I'll put it on, I think. Anyway, got this one, so I'm going to talk about this one first. So this one follows... I'll try and keep my synopsis brief because they tend to ramble on and because I'm trying not to give out spoilers it's like and um well and uh, mm. so I'll try not to do that which was what I was doing in the last one so there are a family of seven sisters who've already lost their mother their father passes away and leaves them um to fend for themselves basically they each have their own kind of talent or special skill. One is good with the, you know, the accounts, one is good at running the house, one is good at running um, baking, all that sort of thing. Kara is one of the main characters. We follow, we, it's not her point of view, it's kind of told from other people, which is interesting. Um, she, they've decided they need to sell two of them to be able to survive. So Kara is one of them and she's sold to a flower house. Um, this isn't a brothel, she's you know, shown how to um, sing and dance and all that sort of thing. It's very much inspired by Geisha. And it's not, um, yeah, like I say, it's not brothel. So they do have some status in the world. And Kara's a natural fit because she's naturally, her kind of talent is she's naturally graceful and charming and all that. And everybody just loves her. Um, Nemian is... She's kind of the odd one out in her family because she doesn't seem to have a particular talent. She's very much kind of a dreamer and otherworldly, that sort of thing. So she's apprenticed to a mage because he sees something in her that could possibly be magic. So we have those two. Um, like I said, Kara's story is told mainly from the viewpoint of other people. In particular, Laylis, who's an interesting character as well. She's had a curse put upon her, so she can never be a true... I can't remember the name they give to, you know, the fully trained ones. Um. Anyway, yeah, I can't remember. She, she could never be... She had to drop out of her training because of a curse that was put on her by a jealous rival. The other main character is Mage Ankin, who is the mage that Nemian is apprenticed to. His house, which is where the name comes from, is not one house though, but I'll not ruin it. I'll leave that. Um, his house is a bit like that because when Nemian's there, she realises it's not just within the city, it also sits in the mountains. So it's this strange you know, rooms can suddenly appear or open and things like that and it'll be into a mountain and not a city. So that's, yeah, where the title comes from. And then there's um, Todd, who is a foreign sorcerer and he should not be, and he has kind of been banned from this kingdom. But he sneaks in because he wants to see the ocean and learn about its magic. But he gets caught by, or found out by Mae Jankin and another conspirator and they persuade him, well, not persuade, they, they threaten him um, and force him into working with them to try and get rid of the heir to the throne. 
So it, the, yeah, that was quite a good one. I like the characters in that one. I'll go back to it in a minute. This one is... There is a, a land called Namira that's surrounded by mist and it's to stop their two neighbours from finding out they're there. One echelon has the Wyvern King, who is the most powerful sorcerer anybody's ever met. Um, and on the other side they have Tor Karin, that is sort of a warlike people and they do blood magic. So to keep them hidden they have this mist and this mist kind of repels and confuses people. So even if they happen to stumble through when they go back out, they'll not remember what's happened. So this starts off when the Lord Doric, who is the, well, the Keeper of the Mist, passes away. He was not a very nice person, but he left behind three sons and a bastard daughter who was never recognised by him. She never had his help, so obviously she, <laughs> she doesn't like him. But it comes to her because it's the land that chooses who the heir is and not, you know, who your father was of that. Um, it all depends on what the land chooses. So when she's chosen, she has to either choose, they have three people to help her, either the... I had to change camera. This the other one died. So, as I was saying, um, when a new lord or lady who becomes a keeper is chosen, um, there is also, excuse me, a new timekeeper, timekeeper, bookkeeper and doorkeeper chosen as well. She can either choose to keep the old ones or choose another one. If they put down the mantle sort of thing, um, Namira will choose another one. Um, uh, she, the old timekeeper, he offers his services again, the other two don't, they just say, no, don't choose me, I'm out of here. Um, and you find out why later on, but I won't spoil it for her. The old timekeeper, the old timekeeper, he stays, she, she says, no, you can stay. Our two childhood friends, Tassel and Court, um, they become, Court becomes her new doorkeeper. He's a very serious and <laughs> um, master of fact young man. The doorkeeper, he can open doors in and out of Namira and he knows where all doors are, sort of thing. Uh, the bookkeeper, who Tassel becomes, basically does what she says. She has all the, the births and deaths, history, everything that can be found in a book, she will know. And they have their own magic for that as well. Just like Court will know where every door is, Tassel can know. She can sort of access any book she's needing at the time. And the timekeeper, basically, it's the timekeeper, you know what that is. So when Kerry is chosen by Namira to become the new lady, the first thing that happens is the mist, which had been thinning, fails completely. This has nothing to do with her. This is... Um, our father previously has not been very good at his job. So straight away there's a sorcerer from Echelon has come through and a young man named Osman Tor has come from Tor Karen. So she has to deal with that, deal with the mist disappearing altogether, um, um, trying to keep her people safe from the Wyvern King, because if he finds them he'll just take everything, he'll take the magic of the land and everything. So it's all a case of trying to get him um, unhappy brothers who were the ones who thought one of them at least would be chosen to you know be the new heir so their unhappiness at the decision made and trying to accept Kerry who's our half sister half bastard sister and um, the fact that she's very young as well even though she's been living alongside when her mother passed she took over her mother's bakery so it was an interesting so a struggle for power there. So out of the two, I would th I think I enjoyed the story of this one more. It had more intrigue in it, and um, I mean they both had some intrigue, but this one was more subtle, I think, and uh, had more magic, which seems a bit strange to say because it's all about magic. But uh, 
yeah, I did enjoy this one. I like the characters better. I like the fact that Cara, even though she wasn't a point of view character, she was one of the main characters. But her story was told by other people. So I really did like that about this book. And this one, I like the fact that Kerry, even though she was thrust into this new life and really didn't want it, did not want anything to do with her father, um, had to deal with brothers who saw her as less than them. She was a very practical and, um, you know, just get on with it sort of young lady that she got. She, she always, um, one of the things she kept saying was um, she used her mother's look and her mother's voice um, to make her brothers fall in line, basically. You know, <laughs> that look you always get from your mother when you're doing something you shouldn't be. I think she was trying to channel her mother in that sort of way just to get her brothers to behave basically because um, well one of them in particular was trying to undermine everything she did because he was the the main runner to be the heir and then when he wasn't he was not happy about it so yes like I said I've read Rachel Numier's Griffin Mage trail and I did enjoy that these two have enjoyed as well um I mean, they're not great books or by any stretch of the imagination, but they're very enjoyable. I really do like her writing style. It's really easy to get into. I hate saying that because it always makes it sound like, you know, oh, it's really simply written. Well, it's not. It's just, I think some writers are just, they're good at that. They're good at just, you know, giving you a good story that's easy to follow, easy to read. Maybe not easy to follow. I mean, there's some of these, this one in particular has got twists and turns in it. And this one does have some surprises as well. But uh, she's definitely a, a reader. A reader. She's <laughs> definitely a writer. I've enjoyed. Um, previously, and I will continue, I've got Winter of Ice and Iron, I think it is. I've got that one to get through as well. So, yeah, these are, I would definitely say they're YA. Both fantasy. Uh... And yeah, I think well worth it. The, this one, The House of Shadows, I'm not sure how easily got anymore because, sorry, I hurt my finger. Um, apparently, I got the last one in Amazon UK. They've probably got more by now, but um, it is an older book. I think it was, oh, I don't know when. I'm going to look, and this one, like I say, was only maybe one or two years ago I got it. It came out, I should say. So that's a quick book review for today. Um, well, I'll try and do more of these, I think. So do enjoy that. I'm not good at book reviews, though, but, you know, I try and help where I can, because even though it's mostly writing that I do in this channel, I do read a lot as well. And not just fantasy, I'm branching out into other things, tentatively and with trepidation sometimes, but I am trying. So there you go. Okay, bye.